Welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guide, and today we continue our May is Suede. Uh, today we're going to uh, take a look at the shoes that we wore this week, and then take a look at some of the uh, new things that are happening in my collection, uh, including a couple of unboxings and a few reviews of uh, some shoes from 2020. Uh, starting off uh, for this week, we have the uh, Carmina uh, Suede 80144. Uh, uh, then this is the TLB Nolan, uh, the TLB 136, uh, followed by the uh, Alfred Sergeant Herrick 2, uh, then the Paraboot Avignon, and then followed by the Aubercy Edward. And then this is the uh, Enzo Bonafé Balway boots that I got. And then in just looking at the soles, you know, I, I really like soles. I think they tell so much about the shoe. This is the Tormir sole. Uh, this is a day-night sole, but this is actually a, a TLB version of it. This is the TLB city sole here. Uh, then the Alfred Sargent sole, really cool in the exclusive range. The Paraboot rubber soles are unlike any other sole out there. Uh, and this is the Enzo Bonafé sole. And lastly, the Aubercy sole, which has a kind of a unique style to it. And then I did a little toe pop here with the Enzo Bonafé just because it's cool. I realized the toe is out of focus. Let's see what's inside. So, Enzo. They make fantastic shoes. And this is my first, my very first pair of boots. And my first shell. Now, um, a friend of mine has said, um, the shell guy, uh, he has said that the shell coming from Enzo and from um, some of the other higher end makers is at much, much higher quality. And there's no denying this shell is fantastic. See, same kind of pull tab as on my Gaziano and Girling um, Thorps. So these are really beautiful boots. Uh, I couldn't be happier to have them and they're just very unique. And now onto the Aubercy Edward. Came with uh, shoe bags. Now I, I wanted, I, I reached out to them and I talked to them about options that I could do. This is my first opportunity working with the brand. The brand is, is very uh, well known in, um, in, in the, the high end circles. I've heard about it uh, from sartorial talks, from, from, from different things uh, uh, that I've read online and very excited to try them. Now um, in my communications with them, the shoes are made in Italy unless it's bespoke and then it's made um, in their factory in Paris. But these are very, very nicely done. So these are just beautiful shoes and very happy to add them as part of my collection. If you've got a big expanding shoe collection, you probably have quite the collection of shoe horns too, because a lot of shoes especially your mid to high end shoes come with a shoehorn um, as, as part of the shoe purchase. Um, and you have them like this and, and they really come in a couple different varieties, but I wanted to nail down these two because I, I think that they're very cool. This is an Enzo Bonafé one and it's plastic. It's uh, formed. It's small. These are great for fitting in a suitcase. Uh, they have the angle right for, for a really tight shoe. And then you have this, which is Barker, which is your smaller, thinner, maybe easier to pack in a suitcase than this because it takes up less space. But at the end of the day, when you're at home and you start looking at shoehorns, you're probably going to want to have something that's a little bit sturdier. And so you wind up with a number of different options. Now, the first option is this one. And this was gifted to me by Skolex when I bought a pair of shoes. And it's... Um, you know, probably 10 bucks. It's cedar, I think. And it's uh, sanded down. It's very nice. Not too different from the other ones, but it's a nicer quality, right? Because it's wood and um, kind of a handy piece. Now, I've gotten some in bone um, as gifts with different shoes and so forth. But um, I had a couple that were just, uh, and I also had some that are wrapped in leather, which are really nice, um, uh, that were made by leather craftsmen, which are, which are beautiful. But I wanted to focus on two that I think are really, really interesting. The first one is a boot horn, and this one is made 
out of horn, okay? And relatively thick here, but, but it's also been thinned down. I could probably thin it down more myself. But this was about 20 bucks. I got it on Amazon, not, uh, not a name brand or anything like that. But it's long, and so I can do this while I'm standing, and I can do this with cowboy boots, which is why I bought it, um, just to uh, make sure that I get my foot in there nice and tight. And then um, in the trial shoe process with Francis Wapplinger, um, uh, who's making uh, the pair of shoes that I, I refer to as my dragon height shoes, um, he gave me this, um, and I joked around with him that he, he was giving me a shoehorn to make sure that I don't mess up his trial shoes, you know. And, um, but he laughed and then he said that I could keep it. And it's a, it's a beautiful shoehorn, but what I like about this the most is that it's so thin and it's angled just right to get in a very, very tight fit. Because if you use a shoehorn, and, and I know not all of us do, right? Um, having it tight when it's a tight fit with the shoe is really important because if it's too thick, it can actually make a shoe that fits perfectly too big. And that's never a good thing. So something to consider there. Now, there is one other accessory that I wanted to bring out here, which um, I have, and I really, really like it. And that is a classic lambskin wool mitt. I got this from Herring. It was about 20 bucks. You can spend 100 on these. They, can, they go really, really high. But um, what I like about these is that this is a really good way of just being able to buff your shoes. You can see I use this on a lot of burgundy shell cordovan. <laughs> But you can use this to uh, buff your shoes up um, after, you know, you've worn them a few times and, and they've been shined. You do like a dust brushing. Use this in order to buff up the shine. And it works really, really fast and doesn't take a lot of time. And um, this, the, using the lambskin on it um, produces the heat that you need in order to get the wax perfect a lot faster than anything else I've ever done. So something to keep in mind there. Not that I'm, I'm not selling any of this stuff. Just something that I've learned over the years that makes a difference in how I'm able to uh, get ready quickly when I need to. So today we're going to do an update on three shoes. We're going to start with these J. Fitzpatrick Pullmans, uh, then talk a little bit about a pair from TLB uh, from, uh, called the 136 and then move on to an Edward Green Pulpero. Uh, this is the J. Fitzpatrick Pullman. It is an austerity brogue. I've had it now for a little bit less than a year and uh, it's really holding the test of time very well. Uh, if you look at the finishing on the shoe, uh, you know, they've done a pretty good job in making it clean without presumption it is after all a casual shoe the stitching is doing really well and i've had these in the rain and uh, they dried and brushed out very well everything about them is just standing up really really well now um when i first did a review on j fitzpatrick i had a pair of um of shoes that uh got some good creasing in it it was an adelaide uh the sunny side actually and so questions came up on the channel over and over again about the leather quality. And I can't really speak to those. I've sold them since. And, you know, I've had a lot of other museum calf that didn't have that kind of creasing. But I can say this. When I look at this suede, this very specific suede in this shoe, there is absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever with leather quality. They're just very, very well done. And I feel like they're doing really well over the test of time. So I'm going to say that maybe those uh, folks that talked about uh, bad quality at J. Fitzpatrick in terms of the leather may have been premature. Uh, I personally don't think that a little bit of uh, deep creasing in a shoe means that it's bad leather quality. But I can tell you for these, they're simply outstanding. So this is the TLB136. Now, I changed the laces out. These are actually laces from my St. Crispins. And I wanted a wider, wide lace with them. I thought it changed the look a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I stand by the decision. I think it, it looks pretty cool. Um, they're probably 
not as uh, tight as I would normally have them when I when I show the shoes, right? But you know, it's it's a good look. Um, the uh, I always had a trouble photographing these because the um, the brown the brown on brown is so subtle, but this uh, the the stitches here on the apron are really quite well defined. And so in the shoe picks that I had from this week where I wore these, um, I was able to pull them out by just creating a little bit of sharpness and definition on them. And I like the way that they came out a lot better. So uh, it's a very, very handsome shoe. And again, from a time standpoint, it's really doing very, very well. There's, um, you know, suede is extremely resilient and you can get it all scuffed up and then you can just brush it out. And you get a little thing in there like that. Look at that, it's gone, no big deal. And these are city soles. And while I'm not traditionally a fan of city soles, these soles are very, very nice. I love the fact that it's got a narrow beveled waist and it is just holding up really, really well. So I'm very happy with the way these are continuing to, 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 to form to my feet the way they continue to feel over wear after wear after wear. And after about uh, nearly a year now, just uh, really very solid shoes and very happy that they're part of the collection. You know, Baby Suede is such a nice material to work with. You know, if you don't have a lot of suede shoes, you might not know how difficult or easy different qualities of suede can be. And the one thing I'll say about these Edward Greens is that the quality is just superb. Now, granted, they, they ought to be for what they are, right? I mean, they're fairly expensive loafers uh, that are cemented, most likely, um, but uh, very, very nice material. Super soft, super comfortable. At the end of the day, when you look at a shoe, um, and I did a worth the price video on these, um, which I've recently renamed Shoe Reviews, and, and I thought that these were overpriced for what they are. But, you know, it's been a, a year and a whole summer later, and we're approaching summer again, and they do have their place in, in my wardrobe and what I wear. They're very, very unstructured. Uh, they're very easy to pack and they're quite easy on the feet. So I'm um, happy that I have them. Uh, it's certainly not a shoe that I plan on parting with, but at the same time, um, you know, not a, uh, not a workhorse, uh, but at the same, uh, but also a, uh, a solid part of a growing and expanding collection. So as we look at the pipeline and how things have transpired over the last week, I haven't made any new additions to it, just subtractions as things start to come in. But as I look at what's next, I've got a real conundrum on my hand. I've moved the yearn from a split toe to an Adelaide, and I've started to look at seamless hole cuts, both from Acme and St. Crispin's. And I'm now looking at a seamless a hole cut Adelaide, a faux Adelaide, from Ichigo Ichi as well. So a lot for me to think about as I start looking at this and uh, decide what is actually next.